So folks, welcome to a brand new product review video um, on this baby, which is the brand new Showtech Phantom 50 LED Spot. Um, it's a moving head luminaire, as you can probably most likely tell, um, and it's part of the ever all sort of popular Showtech Phantom series of moving heads. Um, some of you may have possibly checked out or even possibly used the Showtech Phantom 250 Spot, the CMY Wash, and their newer Phantom 300 uh, Beam um, or Spot, um, and this is basically their new LED versions, which is part of the Phantom range. Um, if any of you know the Showtech brand very, very well, they've obviously got their Indigo range, but this is designed to be more of a slightly cheaper moving head, but really much more on the Diddy and Low uh, sort of compact size. Um, so what we're going to do for you today is give you a bit more of a product review and an insight into the product rather than just a general overview of the product of what the features are. Um, one of the things a lot of people sort of talk to us about is actually looking at what the products are, uh, their size, and uh, what they're like in terms of build quality, um, and actually in terms of actually using it. So what we're going to do is show a lot of you the main key components about this product and why it's so good. So first of all what I'd like to do is show you, is show you a size comparison. Um, a lot of people look at dimensions and look at weights, kilos, you name it from sort of manufacturers product videos and also um, actual physical pictures but what we're going to do today is compare it next to an iPhone. So a full tilt We'll just put the actual uh, tilt at what you would normally put, say, a 128 valuation. Um, we'll actually put it next to an iPhone. So you can see here, in terms of height, it's around about two to three iPhones high. It's not massive at all. Um, as you can see, with like most moving head luminaires, it's got both tilt and, of course, full pan also as well. Like most moving head luminaires, it's quite smooth and it's quite slick. But, of course, the great benefit with this is not only is it size, but also it's weight. It's really lightweight. It's obviously got a double bracket on the bottom, which you can obviously put a single bracket across, put your clamp onto it, and now wet and away you go. So it's quite simple and it's quite lightweight. What we'll do first of all is pull the covers off and actually show you the build quality, because that's one of the great things about this moving head. Folks, here she is. This is the Phantom 50 LED spot all inside. And of course, what we're going to show you now is actually how all of this is built and constructed internally. So you can only see here that as we've done right there, you've got obviously your main loons running through your bearings and built well into the side compartments. Obviously these are coated with plastic which has obviously simply been unscrewed and pulled away. Same with this side, which of course here has got the full main drive belt which controls your tilt right here. And of course that's all controlled by your usual sensors here and of course from your drive cog which of course is mounted directly to your main direct stepper motor. So let's have a look at the direct um, main output lumen from the actual LED head itself, running right through the fixture and only into the actual main lens itself before it emits to wherever it's projecting to. So let's show you from the back through to the front. One of the things you may notice about this LED head is that we've actually got not only a fan at the back which expels any of the heat from the fixture, but you've got a main heat sink block here. Um, and of course, as you can probably tell from the way in which the actual lens itself is slightly displaced, some moving heads have the lens directly in the centre of the head. This is slightly offset, and this is of course part and parcel of the way in which the, the, the fixture is designed to accommodate the traditional colour and gobo wheels. The LED head fixture point itself is obviously mounted here, and what they've done is they've actually enclosed the whole entire LED head by the heat sink. And of course, that's quite good in the sense that it really means that all, all heat is expelled directly from the head, um, and of course it's really in some respects as well protects the LED head from dust so of course when you're utilizing a head with an LED source it means that you're not having to actually try and gain access at it to repair for any reason obviously as the actual lamp output itself outputs from the actual LED itself um, it runs obviously through the traditional color wheel um, and this has got a really nice slick and smooth color wheel the motor is very very good um, really really runs quite nicely particularly on DMX of course as the light power runs through the color wheel it then goes through to the gobo wheel as well which of course here you've got the traditional rotating wheel which of course then has another independent motor which then obviously turns the gobos themselves. Not only how the build quality right the way in the head is very very clean all of the wiring looms run right the way through they're all neat and smartly tied and then of course from the output of the gobo wheel itself it runs through here and actually inside you've also got a three facet prism which you can see just here by my flat finger which of course as you stick in there you can see that obviously then is DMX controllable to come over. Note that the prism is not unfortunately rotatable but of course it's just accessible just to provide breakout effects, um, mid-air aerial effects and of course just pattern protections as well. So that gives you an idea internally 
and of course once it outputs there it outputs from the through the prism and of course through the lens at the top which is completely manually focusable subject to where you're installing it um, and that gives you an idea on the build quality internally but overall very very good and obviously for installation you pretty much won't have much of a problem so folks we've put the covers back on now um, it's just a case of normal Phillips screwdrivers in the top of the head to the side all comes apart, very, very simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to give you a quick insight into the actual head itself um, in terms of just the base features of it. So we've looked at the top, let's have a quick focus on the bottom. Um, basically, you've got a normal standard four uh, L sort of four basically digit LCD display um, with four basically buttons. You've got your mode, your enter, your up, down, and of course your enter button. Uh, that gives you your control panel. You've got a small fan here, of course. Um, on the back, quick changeover for you. Um, you've got an IEC input, there is no power on and off switch, so of course any direct input is going to instantly provide power to this head, um, and of course your normal standard inputs, of course you've got both three pin input and output. Obviously this is designed more for uh, the DJs, small bar installs, um, nightclubs, discotheques, you name it, so of course it doesn't necessarily need the production and full touring application of five pin. Uh, and of course you've got a normal standard two amp um, fuse as well, and that gives you an idea of what's on the front and the back. Obviously the side you've got a vent here and of course a vent just here as well um, and as detailed earlier on on the base of the unit four rubber feet um, two brackets which are fixed you can take these off um, and with the actual fixture itself you do get a single mounting bracket that goes across the back here um, with twist lock which obviously you then just mount your single clamp to which then can basically enable you to mount that directly up as you can see, um, I'm just holding it from the, from the actual head, but you can actually see it's not that heavy. Um, that's one of the great things about it. Of course, the technical spec will tell you the exact kilogram rating of it, but as far as I'm concerned, this is actually a bloody, excuse my language, good head. So there you so go. Back. Here we go from start up. Excuse me in the way of the old camera there. What we're going to do is we're just going to show you a very quick brief run through of the LCD display and the inbuilt features and the modes of the Phantom 50 LED spot. This is going to be quite quick because I don't really want to go into massive, massive, massive detail. But to give you an idea, the head obviously does quickly start up. It obviously homes as per normal. And this is entered into the normal standard uh, fast mode, which is an inbuilt mode in the actual head itself. You do have uh, two different modes built in as an automatic mode. You have a fast and a slow. Um, you also have a sound to light mode in build which is quite self-explanatory um, the reason that I've stuck it on the fast mode is to give you guys an exact idea of just what the pan and the tilt speed is um, the other great benefit with this head of course is obviously its menu display um, you've got various functionalities of the head itself so what we'll do is we'll go through it from start to finish obviously first of all is pan you can reverse the pan and the tilt um, and exactly the same uh, on the tilt as it shows here so of course if you're running multiple fixtures you want some to go left some to go right so do the reverse quite simple the display you have normal reverse display feature so of course you can normally turn the display upside upside down if you're mounting the fixture either like it is at the moment or of course mounted on a ceiling. Um, you've got different control personalities of the head. You can have both advanced 13 channel or basic 8 channel. Um, of course check the manual that gives you the full idea of what the DMX uh, settings are based upon the channels um, but of course check the specs and we have a play with it and you get the idea of that. The next mode is of course your pan angle. Um, the great benefit with this head is that you've got uh, basically varying options of the angle of the pan and the tilt. So in this instance you can vary the pan angle from 100 180 degrees, 540 degrees, or 360 degrees. So of course if we enter a full 540 mode, the head will now do a complete 540 revolution as you can see, or near enough, uh, allowing us to give you that full control. So that's very, very good for pan angle, um, but the other good one, surprisingly as well, is, is, really, is really the tilt. Um, if you, this is obviously varied to a 270 degree tilt, but you can of course vary that if you want to, to even be a 90. So this at the moment the head is limited to a 90 degree, of course, you can set it to 180 or to 270 if you want to. So bars, installs, that's where it's great, an application sort of from there. So the till, I'll just return that back to 270 mode. You can only reset the head as you normally would do. Uh, your load address, of course, basically lets you, of course, work out what the load rating is on the head, I believe. I haven't checked the manual on that 100%, so please ignore me if I'm wrong. Um, and, of course, you've got full DMX number 1 to 512 control on it. So that gives you an exact idea of the inbuilt modes within the menu itself. And, of course, there's only things like master-slave mode as well. Um, so you can set one as a master if you like the disco boys or the DJ boys. And, of course, the rest are slaves if you want to as well. So that's very, very simple. What we'll do next is take a quick look at the colour and the gobos in a dark room projected onto a white ceiling to give you an exact idea of what the colours and gobos are like and also give you an exact idea of that three facet prism. Like we mentioned earlier, the prism's not rotating but as far as I'm concerned, for a head that's this stinky, the fact that it doesn't rotate is not much of a biggie. But to me, 
It's where we look at its colours, its gobos, and of course its brightness, where we're going to see the true testament of why this head is really so good. See you in a moment. Okay folks, so here we go, we're on to the uh, output power and the lumen output, sorry, the lux output of the fixture. First of all, we're going to go through a 20 second dim and fade out. Um, one thing I will point out is that unfortunately the LED dim on this is not overly brilliant. Um, obviously I can understand that because obviously the fixture is designed to be small um, for use for bars, nightclubs, discotheques, the dim is probably not going to be massively utilised. Um, but as a result of that, I probably would have liked to have seen it a little bit better. So if Showtech are listening to this, maybe probably worth it looking at either a better dimmer um, or for those that are out there looking at moving heads, if you are after a dimmer uh, or a decent dimmer moving head, possibly look at an alternative. Um, as you can see there, it only does a 20 second fade out. Um, obviously once the output comes on, this feature's got various forms of obviously normal flash rates of strobe, so you can strobe between fast um, and of course slower rates if you want to. Um, yeah, so strobes are pretty much a standard option with moving heads these days. Obviously, because there's no uh, need for a shutter because it's an LED, uh, the strobe uh, and the dim all happens with the LED direct itself. Um, so that's always just a word to probably make a note of. Um, colours wise, you can see here we're just going to go through the colour wheel itself. Um, I think you've got some like, I don't know, a certain number of colours. The technical spec will tell you 9, 10, 11, 12, who knows. Check the technical spec, it'll tell you. Um, but you can only select any colour. You can go through half colours um, and you can also access a rainbow mode, which of course you can vary the rainbow um, sort of speed of the colour as well. So uh, there it's going fairly slowly, but of course you can speed that up and split colour it. Um, onto the gobos itself, you've got two glass gobos inbuilt to the actual fixture as well. You've got one which is obviously the traditional uh, magenta with the white dots, the glass wave breakout. And of course you've then got the metal cut gobo. So this is just scrolling through the gobos. Um, you can see here with a colour overlay this time. So it's metal gobos and the glass gobos with colour. Um, you've also got gobo judder. And your three facet prism as discussed earlier on. So the prism here as you can see across the glass gobos. Chuck a colour over it. And you can obviously see there just running through the actual gobos. Set through the rotation with a colour. Um, and the three facet prism over the top as well. Could help create different forms of either breakout or visual projection work. Um, so one more time we'll go through the gobo wheel. Um, like we mentioned, you've got the two glass gobos, your metal gobos running right the way through. Um, you've also got gobo judder effect on the wheel on each independent gobo. And of course colours, which you can just stick over the gobos as well. Introduce your three facet prism straight over the top. And obviously by combining different gobo rotation speeds and colours can obviously create different forms of breakout effects and visual effect patterns. So overall, in terms of the output power of the lamp, um, and the fixture itself, I actually think overall you've got a very, very decent fixture. I think Showtech have obviously are quite clearly pretty much aimed this product at, at more your little mobile DJs, um, your clubs, your bars that are after a, you know, a fairly small and compact moving light um, that's great for giving visual effects. Um, but doesn't necessarily have the, the, the sort of true capabilities with the proper big boy um, MSD 250 moving heads. Um, but overall, really, really good product. Um, certainly build quality wise, it's very, very good. Um, and obviously inside the unit, because of the actual uh, sort of LED itself being built with into the heatsink as well, um, it's certainly going to be absolutely superb for mobile applications. For more information, do visit the Highlight website at highlight.nl. Speak to your Showtech or Highlight or DAP dealer. Um, or of course do drop us an email where of course we'd be more than happy to help. Um, thanks for watching guys and if you ever want any more questions please do feel free to drop us an email or highlight direct. Cheers.